This is Archie Sit and Archie has separation anxiety. In this video, I'm going to go over some tips to help prevent separation anxiety from getting worse in dogs, as well as the way that I like to fix separation anxiety. Now, separation anxiety is essentially a panic attack that the dog goes into when it's left alone. Dogs typically manifest this in two different ways. Some dogs have to be with anyone. Some dogs are only, they're only satisfied if they're with one person. I think that that's the case we're working with here. So no, he can be with anyone. You can use anyone. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, um, so basically, and then most dogs fall in that category. Uh, so basically, uh, when this is the case, a lot of times when we have dogs, we love them to death. And I hate saying that loving your dog is bad because it's not. But if most dog, well, most dogs don't actually have practice being alone. We bring them home as a puppy, and then we're with them 24/7. Before they're with us, they're with with siblings, and then their mother. Then they're with us, and after a week, we're off vacation. We have to go back to work. We put them in a kennel or a long-term confinement and we leave and it's very likely the first time in its entire life that is completely alone. Now going from zero to 100 is the biggest range there is. And that's what we ask our dog to do and we wonder why they panic and have difficulty with it. Mm -hmm. So a lot of dogs with separate anxiety will lose control of their bowels and they'll pee and poop. And a lot of people take that personally. The little bastard went around and peed all over the place. If your friend was so scared that she peed her pants, you would never make fun of her. Okay, I'll take that back. If she's a good friend, you would make fun of her a lot. But most of the time, you would never say that thing. You wouldn't make fun of them because they're already so emotionally fraught that they're losing control of their bowels. That's what is happening if a dog loses control of its bowels. Or if it chews the area around your furniture or around the doorway or your furniture, they're trying to relieve some stress. So um, a lot of dogs... Uh, they lose control of their bowels. If they chew around your door, a lot of these dogs, uh, it's not that I can't be alone. It's that I think my humans need my protection, usually because of lack of rules and structure, which was why we spent two hours talking about off camera about rules and structure. So uh, they think my human is going to be out taken advantage of by some guy from, from Inglewood. So I have to go chew through the doorway so I can escape and go find my human and protect them from the world. Come on, that's passive training. Make sure you do that. Okay, so um, we're gonna talk about uh, a couple of things. First of all, when you come and go, don't say a word to your dog. We wanna make it a non-event. Mm -hmm. So when you come home, like, are you okay, buddy? Did you have a fun day? We're making them all excited. Now, for dogs, when they're stressed or overly tired, they open their mouth, with, and it looks like kind of like his mouth is right now, which is, it kind of looks like a smile. I can't see his mouth is open or not, probably no. not because the treat's there. Mm -hmm. But it, we interpret it as a smile. It's just stress often, or I'm overly tired, or I'm letting the liquid evaporate off my tongue. So when we come home, we make a big deal out of it because the dog's jumping up. Well, anything your dog is doing when you pet it is where you're amplifying. So you're amplifying this unbalanced state of mind associated with you arriving. Mm -hmm. We also, before we leave, we're like, oh, little, little Archie, are you going to be okay? Are you gonna, I got to go work for like six hours. You got to stay here. you going to be okay by your lonesome? Most dogs are like, I'm gonna be here sleeping the whole time. Mm -hmm. You should be saying, you little bastard, you gotta go sit here and sleep all day. I gotta go home and bring home the bacon. So when you're coming and going, no production. Pick up your keys, walk out the door. No kiss goodbye, no salutation when you arrive. Just make it coming and going is a very mm -hmm. easy deal. Now for a lot of dogs, I don't have them to demonstrate here, um, but a lot of dogs pick up what we call triggers that are associated with us leaving. We have a departure ritual we go through. So we get, we sit down in a certain place, chair, and put on our shoes. We go over here and grab our sunglasses, put them on top of our mm -hmm. head. We go and grab our purse. Well, I do at least. Mm -hmm. um, we grab our, our keys. That makes a very specific sound, jingly sound. Mm -hmm. And then we usually make this per departure protocol. So the dog recognizes, oh, she's sitting in that chair. The only time she sits there is when she's getting ready to leave. Oh, she put on those shoes. Oh, she's wearing her uniform. She picked up her purse. She picked up her thing. But by the time they actually pick up the, your keys and you start walking the door, the dog is freaking out because it knows what's coming. Mm -hmm. So we want to do what we call desensitization. For desensitization, if you wear a uniform, do you wear a uniform for mm -hmm. what you do? So um, if you like always put your shoes on here on a Saturday or a day where you're not going to work or 7 o'clock at night, grab your shoes, go over there, sit down, put them on, and then go lay down on the couch and watch a little TV. Mm -hmm. Go over, pick up your keys, jingle them, put them in your pocket, and take them out of your pocket and put them back down. Grab your purse, sunglasses, all the things that you go through. You mm. might want to have your partner videotape you as you're leaving to go to work or mm. your kids or somebody or walk, put a camera up and you'll see the little things that you do. You're probably unaware of, I always sit in this chair and I do this, that. Mm -hmm. So the idea is we want to kind of help the dog practice this. A lot of people say, should we take the dog for a W-A-L-K? 
Not mm-hmm. only they spell it, they spell it in a weird way and they cover up part of their mouth. Mm-hmm. If a dog got excited when I said walk, I would say walk like a thousand times a day, independent of going for mm-hmm. a walk and desensitize them. Mm-hmm. It's the same principle here. Mm-hmm. This is also why you shouldn't repeat a command word over and over because you'll can't train the dog not to listen to it or that it's okay to ignore you. So once we've gone and identified all those triggers, we help the dog practice all of them independently until the, we pick up the keys and I was like, whatever, keys. Mm-hmm. Just pick up the keys, put them back down. You're not going anywhere. And when we do actually go leave, we want to try to like distract the dog, have throw a treat down the stairs and pick up our keys quietly and put them in our pocket. Mm-hmm. So when we actually do leave, it doesn't have all that association. So, but he will realize that... He will. This is just one stage. Mm-hmm. So the first thing we want to make sure is he doesn't recognize that we're leaving. So the second thing that I do is for most dogs, they go from, like I said, a zero or 100% access to us and we leave, they go to zero. Mm-hmm. That's the biggest range there is. So the way I've been able and very, very successful with this is teaching dogs to practice being alone in an easy capacity. And I'm going to show you how to do that right mm-hmm. now. I'm going to teach him how to stay. Now, most people treat, try to teach their dog to stay the most difficult way possible. Stay, they take a step back, stay, 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 stay a hundred times. Mm-hmm. I teach the stay in what I call the three Ds. First for duration, then for distance, then with distractions. Mm-hmm. So the first stage is just teaching the dog to, uh, to stay in the location. Sit. So what I do is I have a bunch of treats in my hand and I'm gonna hold one between my thumb and forefinger so I can deliver it right away. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna put it at my hip or my side. I'm gonna give his attention and say, stay, pull it to my hand, my chest, and I count one, two, three, four, five. Get ready to deliver it, and I wanna deliver it with a hand signal. So I say, stay. So when I'm doing this, if you notice, my, the, the, the treat is there, I'm holding it up about a foot or two away so he can see this hand signal means stay. Mm-hmm. Now, I do it as what I call bookends. Now he got up and he's still in the same location. And that was because I took a little bit of time. Sit. The book says if you put him in a sit, stay, as long, they can lay down or stand up as long as they stay in the location. Mm-hmm. See that, please? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. All right, so basically what we do is I say stay, I put my hand back and I count to whatever duration, one, two, three, stay. So I started the stay, I counted my duration, and I ended the stay. Mm-hmm. And I also went too long there. I'm going to show you three in a row, so you can, and then we need a release word. Mm-hmm. I say release. I, I have four dogs. They have their own release word. Release, break, freedom, and parole. Mm-hmm. Do you have any thoughts on which word you want to use? You can use other words like holiday or vacation, or we can use a word in your native language. Mm. I might not be able to say it. Um, release is good. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do three, and then I'm going to show you how to release it. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to go by threes. So stay. I count one, two, three. This would be something you do in your head. I deliver the treat and say, stay. Then I say, stay a second time. I did that a flash away just to give a look. And now he's going to lay down. That's okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Notice where my eyes are. I'm not locking eye contact with him. Mm-hmm. Make sure you break eye contact. Mm-hmm. So now, stay. I wait for him to get done. I start it up again. Stay. One, two, three, four. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Stay. Now we're done. So I want to tell him that we're done practicing. Mm-hmm. I do it like this. Release. So you start and stop each stay while you're in training. Eventually your release word is saying release. Mm-hmm. We throw the treat far enough away where he has to get up and take at least one step to get mm-hmm. it as his way of indicating that we're done with the practice of the mm-hmm. stay. So a lot of people do it like this. They say stay to start it, stay, and they think they started it up again, but I haven't. Mm-hmm. So I say stay to start it. When I deliver the treat, I'm saying stay to stop it. Mm-hmm. And then I either release him or start it up again. Mm-hmm. So you want to keep on practicing this. I'm going to have to shift or my knees are going to go. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to keep on practicing this until you can get up to five minutes of stay. Mm-hmm. Now we think this is super easy. It's hard. Why are you not giving me the treats in your hand? Do you want me to shake? You want me to sit? You want me to roll over? I know a bunch of tricks. What are, that tricks are mm-hmm. usually what I get to do to get my treats. Staying in place and doing nothing is actually harder for dogs mm-hmm. than we give them credit for. Mm-hmm. So that's why we start off with my puppy that Quest that I showed you the video on. Mm-hmm. He had to do one week of one second stays. Once he went to two, he would get up and move away. Mm-hmm. So after a while, then I go to two seconds, three seconds, four seconds. Mm-hmm. And every dog's iteration is different. So I would suggest you go by one second increments until you can get him to stay for 10 seconds. Mm-hmm. And get a couple of good ones in a row. Do two, do one second three times in a row mm-hmm. before you go to two seconds. And do that three times or whatever it is. 
So eventually you get to the point where you're at 10 seconds, then you can try going by 10 to 15, but it, and 15 to 20, and then mm -hmm. you go, okay, well, I'm gonna go try to go to 30. Let's say you're counting and always count in your head. Mm -hmm. Let's say I get to 29 and the dog gets up and moves away. That's what we call an auto release. When the dog is learning to stay, it has to have a 100% success rate. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to push too big, too fast. So if I'm counting my head at 28, the dog got up and auto released, I would bring it back and not give it a treat because it didn't earn that reward. Mm -hmm. Then I would go back and practice at 25. I always back up a step or two mm -hmm. to help the dog practice and maintain success. So once you get to the point where the dog can stay for five minutes, and don't practice just here. Practice here, there, 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 upstairs, mm -hmm. downstairs. Dogs don't generalize. They have to do things in a lot of different capacities before they can actually develop a skill and generalize it. So once you get it to five minutes, where five times in a row you can say stay, and the dog stays for five minutes. And if you have to say stay, stay multiple times, you don't have the stay. Mm -hmm. You say stay once, and then you say stay to end it, and then release it or start it up again. Mm -hmm. So once you get up to that five minute mark, now we're able to start doing distance. Archie, could you come over here a little bit more nonchalant? <laughs> there we go. All right, so I'm going to do this again on my knees, and I'll move a little bit away. All right, come here, Archie. Sit. Have you noticed your dog always starts in a sit? Mm -hmm. Or you start in a sit, and he lays down? Just start him to lay down. Start with whatever he wants. Mm -hmm. So let's say I'm standing. Mm -hmm. So I say stay. I take one step backwards. I count to two. Take one step forward. Say stay. And then I, this time I would go stay and take one, two steps backwards, count to four, take two steps forward, stay. And the next time I take three steps backwards, count to nine. Now this is just my starting point. I mm -hmm. vary it based on what the dog is doing. Mm -hmm. what, like I said, one my quest I had to do one second stays for like a week. Mm -hmm. So eventually you get to the point where you can be 15 or more feet away. Let's say that there's a wall right here and mm -hmm. it goes to here. So I, get, I take steps backwards. Archie, I need you to stay there for this demonstration purpose. So let's say I take 15 steps back and the wall is here. So if I go one step here, he can't see me because the wall mm -hmm. is here. So when I get to this point, I take one step here, I count to one second, and I come back right away and walk up and give him the treat. Stay. So the first time I go out of his line of sight, I'm only out of his line of sight for one second. Now it helps if you guys have security cameras, have it on your phone so when you go outside, did he get up and start moving away? Yeah, I have So if he too. does, then mm -hmm. you know to back up and practice the previous mm -hmm. step. But if you go to five minutes first, then you start moving away, they kind of are understanding and they can do it for longer and better capacities. Mm -hmm. So the next time I, I step back, I may step back for two seconds out of sight before I come back and give him the treat. Mm -hmm. Three, four. You want to keep on doing this until drop. That's how you do drop. Mm -hmm. um, so you keep on doing this until you can be out uh, 15 feet away and you can be out of his line of sight for like a minute or two longer. Mm -hmm. Once you, and you want to practice until, and if, I don't want to give you an arbitrary, sometimes you need to go up to one minute, sometimes you might need to go 20 minutes. The idea is to get to somewhere between like three to about 10 minutes he can stay without being able to see you. Mm -hmm. So maybe put him and stay in the kitchen and come right here. Now we talked about earlier, go from zero or 100% to zero, there's nothing in between. Well, now we're having him stay where he can't see you, but he knows you're in here because you can still smell you and hear you. Mm -hmm. So that's somewhere between zero and 100. Mm -hmm. Now we're helping him practice in an easier capacity. And he knows you haven't left. So we're building up his confidence by being alone and practicing being alone, not barking. Mm -hmm. Right now when you leave, he practiced freaking out and barking. That's what he's practicing. That's what he's going to get better at. This will help him practice not doing something. And also for dogs, if I have a job, I'm not going to bark and whine and whimper because I'm actually on, on duty. I'm doing something right now. Mm -hmm. So every dog is unique in terms of the, how long you stay out of out of uh, his distance. But what you want to do is once you can get past like about two minutes where he'll stay outside of distance, then you want to start using it in your day-to-day -day life. You're watching TV on the couch. You're going to go get a glass of water. You get up and say, stay. And then you walk around, get yourself a glass of water, come back, and then, and then say release or throw the treat down. And then he gets released. So mm -hmm. he had to stay while he couldn't see you while you walked away. Mm -hmm. And the next time when you go to the bathroom, you tell him to stay. Next time when you go to make a sandwich, you tell him to stay. Make a cup of coffee. The idea is to make it progressively a little bit longer each time. And by a little bit, I mean very short interval. If you mm -hmm. jump too big and he starts auto-releasing, you took way too big a step. 
I'm not conservative, I'm kind of liberal, but when it comes to this, you want to be very conservative. You want to build success on top of success on top of success. Anytime you have failure, always back up and then practice three or four times that previous easier setting before mm -hmm. you move back forward. Come. So the idea now is now the dog's practice being uh, alone for progressively longer and longer periods of time. Mm -hmm. Once you get to the point where you put him in a stay there and you can watch a half an hour sitcom here and he doesn't get up, felt something weird on his back. I think it's just his fur. Mm -hmm. um, so once you get to that point where you can stay for half an hour in with you in the house, now you're ready to start actually leaving and practicing leaving. But again, we're gonna make it easier. So we're not gonna tell him to stay when we leave. We've been doing that, helping him practice being calm when he can't see us. Mm -hmm. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna get up without grabbing our keys or any of those triggers, get up, walk out the door, turn around, close the door, lock it, take your key out, put your key back in, unlock it, walk back in and sit down and watch TV. No production when you leave, no production when you come. And so now he practices when you went out the door, <gasps> she went out, oh, she came back. So before he gets a chance to panic, mm -hmm. we come back. And because we practiced helping him stay, he's now set up for success. We've helped him prepare him for this, like you prepared your daughters for life. But you don't say stay, right, no, for you this? No, say stay. Mm -hmm. The reason we do the stay is to help him practice the mm -hmm. stay, but it's, it, it's not realistic to tell him to stay and then have us, have us leave. Mm -hmm. We just want him to practice being calm. Mm -hmm. So the next time you walk out the door, maybe you lock the door and stay there for two seconds. And then next time for three seconds mm -hmm. and four. I usually have my one second increments until I'm about 15 seconds I can be outside mm -hmm. and I'm watching him on security camera. Mm -hmm. So, and each time it's only a tiny little bit longer each time, so small in addition that he doesn't even notice it's there. What if he starts barking during that time? Then you push too far and you back up and practice the previous step. Like one second. Yeah. What if he starts barking the second you walk? If you do it right, he won't. Okay. So that's why we spend, it's going to be about two weeks, depending on how often you practice, of you doing the stay before uh -huh. you even start leaving. I see. So by now, you should have it hours of him being practiced being alone where he can't see mm -hmm. right now do you have an audience where you go to the bathroom so you have to go mm -hmm. in the bathroom with you uh, sometimes yeah so he has no practice being alone he folds mm -hmm. so he should no longer go with you to the bathroom mm -hmm. now you stay and then you go to the bathroom and close the door he can't be with you mm -hmm. he ha you have to prepare him for this actually yeah i couldn't do that I sometimes, close the he doesn't, door. sometimes you let him in there because uh, sometimes yeah times. Mm -hmm. no more so mm -hmm. from now on, you in the bathroom, that's your solitary time. He needs to be outside. Right. Well, once you get to the point where you're there, don't do it now until, because otherwise he's practicing freaking out when you're peeing. And you don't want him to do that either. Mm -hmm. So once we only start, when we start to add uh, distance, to, uh, we can be 15 feet away and be outside of his line of sight for longer than uh, uh, like a minute or so before we actually start practicing that. So, and again, mm -hmm. we're not told to stay when we leave. And we gradually can make it longer and longer. Now, a lot of people are like, okay, I was able to stay up for 15 seconds. Let's go out and get a quick cup of coffee. That's a half an hour. 15 seconds to whatever 60 times 30, that's a lot more seconds. Mm -hmm. Math is not my strong suit. So you just set him up to fail. So the idea is progressively get longer and longer. And if he does start barking, where are you? You're not down the street. You're not coming home to find a police officer here. You're right outside. Mm -hmm. So as soon as he starts barking, you should always have a stopwatch or be counting in your head. Mm -hmm. So when he starts barking, and I ask my clients, when he started barking, I'm like, what was his count at? If they can't tell me, they're not practicing right because you mm -hmm. need to count so you know how far backwards or forward to go. Mm -hmm. And the whole progress process of this is to be very progressive and eventually he doesn't even realize that he's alone or that there's any reason to panic because you prepared him for being alone. He's practiced at it. He is confident at it. Mm -hmm. And if he does fail, you come right in. So he only barks once or twice. He doesn't spend 20 minutes freaking out, barking and practicing, freaking out. Mm -hmm. So the idea for this is eventually you get to the point where you can sit outside and it's, let's face it, Santa Monica. It can be like the middle of the winter. You still outside, sit outside and get a nice tan probably. Mm -hmm. Take your phone out there, take your iPad, watch a little TV on you know, through your streaming service mm -hmm. right outside the door. And eventually if he can hear you right outside the door, maybe you go to the street or go mm -hmm. a little bit in the courtyard. So he doesn't know where you're at. He just knows you're not here. Mm -hmm. But if he does start crying, you see him on the camera and you can come right back in right away. Mm -hmm. And so that, that's your warning, or not warning, that's your indicator. I need to go back and to back up in time. But that, do you think it will undo anything? Because he'll know, okay, once I start barking, she's coming back. Well, because if you do it every time, yes. But when he barks, you know, you know what your count is. So you back up. So you back up a step and you mm -hmm. practice where he was successful. So ideally you want to come back before the barking. Always. Mm -hmm. I mean, the whole point of this, if you do it right, there is no barking. And do you give you him a... Right, you come up back before he gets a chance to bark. Mm -hmm. And do you reward him? No. 
just come back. That's what you said. We don't want to, if you're warning, that's kind of an, anticipating your arrival is now a big thing. Oh, uh, so you want to make it no big no deal. No big deal. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So eventually you get to the point where you can be outside for like 20, 30 minutes, you know, and, and every dog is unique. You will never have to practice longer than two hours. Mm hmm that would be the maximum. Any dog, once you can get them to do it for two hours, you don't ever have to practice beyond that. Mm -hmm. You probably, I have never had a client that had to practice that long. Mm -hmm. But again, don't be tempted to say, oh, just run to the laundromat real quick. Because you might be gone for nine minutes, but maybe that last minute he barks the whole time. So he now has practice barking a whole 60 seconds. Mm -hmm. And you have to, and you aren't un unaware of it. That's why choose your battles. Like I talked about off camera, you want to practice at a time when you have time to practice. Mm -hmm. Not when you're rushed, not when you have a client, not when you have a meeting, mm -hmm. because then you, if he doesn't cooperate, you get frustrated with him. Right. When you're doing dog training, you always want to end on a good one. Mm -hmm. If you practice something 10 times in a row, he does great nine times, and the last time he got, the, he did poor and you got mad at him, and next time you want to practice, he's like, I don't want to do that last time. The last thing I remember about that last time is you got mad. Mm -hmm. So we would build, last time you did that, you were happy with me. Mm -hmm. And a good little tip is after, when you get done with this, Give him some belly rubs. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so you got cortisol in your blood. Oh, you want to shake? <laughs> you want the ball, huh? We'll, we'll play ball after we get done with this video. Uh, actually, again, this is not for this, but sit. So if he doesn't sit, then I'm not going to throw. Mm -hmm. And then I put the ball down and we, we stop the game. So if he would sit, I would have thrown it as soon as he sat. Mm -hmm. So again, if you want something from me, you have to pay for it. Right now, you're paying him for doing what he wants, so he has no desire to do what you want. Once he realizes, sit, fetch. Sitting causes the person to throw the ball. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna come and sit automatically. Yeah. Again, you have to flip the leader follower dynamic. Mm. All the stuff I'm showing in this video will work only if he sees and respects you as an authority figure. So when he comes back to me, drop, sit. So then I don't play. So at, it won't take very long. He'll, he'll drop mm -hmm. it and he'll sit down and he'll be waiting for you. And then you pick it up. Mm -hmm. You're saying we're playing the game based on my rules because I'm the authority figure. I'm demonstrating my authority, not by dominating you or punishing you, but by creating a scenario where if you do what I want, you get what you want. If you don't do what I want, nothing happens. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we got a little bit sidetracked. And so I want you to really focus on the stay and desensitizing him. Mm -hmm. I've had hundreds of clients who do this who have had no more problems, but don't really? push it too far, too fast. The clients who fa who'll fail are the ones that start leaving and taking too big a jump and the dog practices freaking out. Mm -hmm. Let's do one more sit. This is Archie and these are tips and tricks you can use if you have a dog that has separation anxiety. 